Hey everyone, welcome back to Code with Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this rotating saw trap that moves left and right while the saw is moving in a circle and does some damage using the HP system we created previously. And let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to our content browser, right click, select blueprint class, and we'll create an actor and I'll call this BP underscore saw trap. And then I'll double click. And the first thing I'm going to do is add two static meshes. And the first one I'll just call saw. And then the second one, the second one I'll call the rails. And then for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the polygon dungeon pack. And as you can see in this image, it comes with a bunch of traps here. So like this is the saw that I'm going to be using. And then it has spike traps, the swinging ax, and this thing, and so many more. And I'll just type in saw underscore rails, get this prop mesh, and then I'll click R on my keyboard, and I'll drag out the Y axis just a little longer. And then for the saw, I'm just gonna type saw and look for this um, prop trap saw, and then I'll hit compile and save. And now what we're gonna wanna do is when we're selecting our saw, because it's gonna overlap our character and do damage, I'm gonna type in collision and change this from, change the collision preset from block all dynamic to overlap all. I'll hit compile and save. And then in event graph, I'll get rid of the event tick. And for event begin play, we're gonna start with a sequence. And first we're just gonna test to see if the saw can move left and right. So in order to do that, we're going to drag out the then zero and add a timeline and called, I'm just gonna call this left and right. And now when I double click into it, I will add a, I'll change the length to six. I'll make sure that the loop is on and I'll add a new float track. And this is just, I'll just call this something like move. And all I'm gonna to wanna to do is just make sure the saw stops at the ends for a little bit, and then it'll move between one point to another really quick. So it's gonna start here and then just spin here for a little bit and then zip through real quick and stop at this end. So it's gonna stop at the ends to give players a chance to run through it without getting hurt and constantly moving it side to side. All right, so to start, we're gonna add two dots and we'll set the time to zero and the value will be negative one. And then for the second dot, it'll be 1.25. So we'll stop for like a second and a quarter and leave the value at negative one. So this is just gonna ensure that our saw is just staying in place for up to one, the one second mark or 1.25 in this case. And then we're gonna add another one, we're gonna start moving the saw to the other side. So it goes from negative one, which is gonna be our left side, for example, and then positive one will be our right side. So now I'll add another dot, and this one will be something like 2.5 until, and the value will be one. And then I'll add another dot, because I want it to stay on that other side. The, I'll do something like 3.7, and the value will be positive one again. And then we're gonna add these two bottom and back, but on this side. So I'll add two dots, and I'll do, time will be six, and negative one, and then this one will be, so from 3.7 seconds, is something like 4.9 would be good, given like 1.2 seconds. So just like that. But I don't want it to be like kind of robotic. So for these two, while it's moving, it's gonna start and get a little faster. So I'm gonna highlight these two and then right click and select auto. And then I'm gonna highlight these two and then right click and select linear. Keep this one straight. And then I'll select these two and select auto. So just to when it gets to the ends, it's gonna be a little bit smoother and the stop. And I'll make sure these two are also linear. So linear, auto, linear, auto, linear. And I'll compile and save. And now when I go back to the event graph, I'll drag out my move output and I'll add a lerp vector. And now this is going to actually set our location of the saw. So this is going to tell it to move left and right at a positive one and negative one value and for how long it should stay there for, where this part is actually going to get the location of it. So I'll leave the top one as zero, zero, zero. And then for the bottom one, you can actually just test it where you want it to go to. So it'll be something like 0, 330, 0 in this case. So let me try that. And then I'll drag out the update and do set relative location for the saw. And I'll bring the saw down here and I'll connect the return value of the lerp we created into the new, new location. And I'll hit compile and save. And now when I hit play, I actually need to drag this out into the world. And now when I hit play, you're going to see that it moves left to right perfectly. So it follows our rails and stops at the end. Because if we didn't set it right properly, let's say I set this to 400 something, and then I hit play, then you'll see that it actually passes. 
the rails and it just looks really uneven. So I'll set this back to 330. And now that the left and right is moving fine, we're gonna drag out and create another timeline. And this one's gonna be a lot simpler. This is just gonna be our rotator. And it's just gonna tell the saw to keep spinning. So I'm gonna double click into this and create or change the length to one second, make sure the loop is on, create a new float track, and then I'll add two dots. So it's gonna start from the zero second mark with a value of zero. And because we wanna do a full rotation, the value will be 360 and the time will be one because that's the length that we set in our float track. Now I can pause and save. And now when I go back to the event graph, I'll drag this out and type in make rotator on the X axis, because if we rotate from the Y or Z, it'll look really odd. We don't want it to go sideways or flip upside down and stuff. We just want it to rotate side. And then I'll drag out the update from the timeline and set my relative rotation for the saw. And I'll take out this saw and I'll just drag this one in just because I don't need a lot of clutter on my screen. And then I'll connect my return value for my make rotator into my new rotation for the set relative rotation. And now when I hit compile save, go back to the map, you can see that it's rotating just fine and it's going left and right. That's exactly what we wanted. But now it overlaps me and doesn't do any damage. So let's figure out how to do that. So on my on overlap event, on actor begin overlap, I'm just gonna drag this out and type in apply damage and then connect the other actor to damage actor and you can set this base damage to whatever you want. And I'll do 10 in this instance and then I'll hit compile and save. And now I will just take some damage from the saw and you'll see my HP go down from the HP system that we created. And that pretty much creates our saw trap. Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like and subscribe, comment down below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.